Hey guys, Joshua here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the illegal Onyx, but this time with a RTX GPU on the inside. If you haven't checked out the previous video I did a while back with the 1060 GPU on the inside, you can go check that out. I'll drop the link to that in the description box below. Anyways, the laptop I have here is literally identical to the version with the 1060 GPU, but I'm just going to cover the basic design again so that those who have not seen the previous video will know what to expect when getting this laptop. The laptop has a black anodized aluminium back with the Illiga logo and the inside is just pure black and it is just as beautiful as always. The dimensions are 359mm in width, 240mm in depth and 19.9mm in height with a weight of 1.95kg. Port On one side, nearer to the bottom of the laptop, two USB 3 ports paired with a card reader, the other side with a LAN port, USB 2.0 port with headphone and mic ports, and on the back, two mini display ports, a single HDMI port, USB-C port, and power in. The screen is a 15.6 inch Full HD, so 1920 by 1080 IPS display with sRGB at 100%, 144 hertz with the Infinite Vision bezel-less technology, which basically means thin bezels, great color reproduction for games and productivity, and 144 hertz for all your gaming needs. Back to my favorite part of this laptop, I am still in love with this Gene Switch keyboard. I realize it may not be for everyone, but I like that slight tactile feedback when gaming or even general typing is just comfortable to me because I do love my mechanical keyboards. Now, let's take a listen at what the keyboard sounds like and bear in mind it's slightly louder than your average laptop keyboard. To change your keyboard colors, all you need to do is go into the Illigia command center, go lighting settings, and from here, you can choose all your different effects. So currently it's on rainbow, and these are actually per key RGBs. So if you notice, you can actually change it to wave and you'll see the colors change. And if you're the kind of person that wants to actually fully customize your key, just go to user mode. And from here, just click on each of your selections on what color you want to change. Press it and you get every color you can think of in the spectrum. And you can change it to blue, pink, green, any color you like. So I'm just going to go back to rainbow and now let's take a look at the speed and direction. So from here, brightness, control your brightness all the way up, all the way down, even turn it off. And also the speed. So the speed comes in when you are using things like wave. So it goes fast all the way up. You can even control the direction of it. So it's very interesting on how you can customize the entire laptop. While we're on the topic of lighting, you can actually adjust the LED light bar settings, which is on the front of the laptop. So unfortunately, you actually can't do much with it. Like you can't just set it to a single light. You can turn it off if you choose to, but at the same time, you only get another setting, which is colorful. And if you uncheck it, it will just turn white. And if you press it, then you'll start rotating through all the colors again. So you can, from here, the red, green, and blue, you can lower down each of the different colors. But yeah, I to be honest, I didn't really see that much of a difference. And usually when I'm using it, I just turn the light off. The speakers are nothing spectacular, but still good enough for daily use and casual gaming or even just music consumption. They sound fine, to be honest. The touchpad is smooth and precise and you can now easily turn the touchpad on or off by tapping the top left of the touchpad. So it's just little things like this that make it very nice. For the inside, this sports the 8th gen Intel i7-8750H with 6 cores, the main upgrade a GTX 2070 GPU with max design, 16GB of RAM, 256GB SSD and a 1TB Seagate Firecuda drive. I'll get to why I specifically mentioned the Firecuda later on after these tests. Citibench R15, for the OpenGL, you're getting 92.33 FPS and in the CPU, 1,166 CB. In PC Mark 10, you're getting an overall score of 5,181 with the Essentials scoring 7,886, Productivity at 7,446 and Digital Content Creation at 6,430. 
In 3D Mark Times Y, you're getting overall score of 6084, with the graphics score scoring 6261, and CPU score at 5248. Now for Time Spy Extreme, this for 4K gaming, you're getting overall score of 2813 with a graphics score of 2862 and a CPU score of 2566. For the RTX test, I'm using Port Royal and the score is 3386. For the Nvidia DLSS feature test, I ran this in 1920 by 1080p first and as you can see with DLSS off, it is at 25.88 FPS and with DLSS on, you're getting 36.73 FPS so you do get some gains and now let's run this in 4K. For the 4K DLSS test, with DLSS off, you're getting 7.26 FPS and with DLSS on, you'll only be getting about 13.98 FPS. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, for Mountain Peak, you're getting 75.58 FPS, Syria 59.69 FPS, Geothermal Valley at 54.88 FPS and your overall score is 63.59 FPS. In the Far Cry 5 benchmark, with everything on Ultra, as you can see here, you'll be getting a minimum FPS of 55, average FPS at 73, and a maximum FPS of 87, with the frame rendered being 4,298, so this is actually pretty good performance. In PUBG, with everything on Ultra, generally you will be able to get above 80 FPS and sometimes it does dip a little bit below because when there's stuff rendering in the background it will dip it under the 80 FPS mark but most of the time you'll be getting above 80 FPS so definitely super great performance from this laptop. I've been running the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark for about half an hour on loop just so I can see the temperatures and as you can see for the CPU because Final Fantasy 15 uses quite a lot of CPU power the loads are range from around 60 to 80 plus percent and the temperatures are at 90 to 91 degrees celsius meanwhile the gpu takes about 80 to 100 percent load and the temperatures are at 83 to 84 degrees celsius so it fluctuates very slightly one to two degrees celsius marks performance wise there really is nothing to complain about the onyx even though the 2070 is of the max q design it still performs admirably Temps do get a little hot if you're just playing games like Fortnite, PUBG, Dota 2 or League. The CPU temps are going to be in the mid 80s while the GPU will be in the high 70s and the fans will automatically start spinning faster and louder to cool the laptop down as much as possible. Fan controls, you really don't get that many options. Well, literally no options. They only just have a turbo option built in and you can control that from the fan boost button that is placed next to the power button or go into the illegal command center and trigger it from there. I'll just let you see how loud it gets on in turbo mode. Rewind a bit and let's get back to the Seagate Firecuda drive. So previously, Illigia, they were actually using a different type of drive in this, which was just a HDD for the secondary drive. But since then, they've upgraded to the Firecuda. And basically, this is a solid state hybrid drive, which blends SSD technology with a HDD platform. So your read write speeds are going to be faster than the usual HDDs. And that will actually translate to faster loading times for games or programs. Overall, the laptop has been improved significantly with the addition of the RTX GPU and Firecuda drives. Even though I do wish there would be a way to lower temperatures more, but I will say that the cooling solution diverts the heat away from where I rest my palms when gaming, so it doesn't even feel the slight bit uncomfortable at higher temps. And yeah, that's kind of the drawback if you want a RTX GPU in your laptop. So let me know what you think of the Illegal Onyx in the comments below. Would you purchase or upgrade to this laptop? Like and subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos come up. And I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao!